Mauryan art encompasses the arts produced during the period of the Mauryan Empire, which was the first empire to rule over most of the Indian subcontinent. It represented an important transition in Indian art from use of wood to stone. It was a royal art patronized by Mauryan kings especially Ashoka. Pillars, stupas, caves are the most prominent examples. Overview According to Nyarajan Ray, the sum total of the Mauryan treasury of art include the remains of the royal palace and the city of Patalipatra, a monolithic rail at Sanath, the body mandala or the altar resting on four pillars at Bodh Gaya, the excavated Chalitya halls in the Berabar and Nagarjuni hills of Gaya including the Sudama cave bearing the inscription dated the 12th regnal year of Ashoka, the non-edict bearing and edict bearing pillars, the animal sculptures crowning the pillars with animal and vegetal reliefs decorating the abasi of the capitals in the front half of the representation of an elephant carved out in the round from a live rock at Dawley. Kumarasmi argued that the Mauryan art may be said to exhibit three main phases. The first phase was the continuation of the pre-Mauryan tradition, which is found in some instances to the representation of the Vedic deities. The second phase was the court art of Ashoka, typically found in the monolithic columns on which his edicts are inscribed and the third phase was the beginning of brick and stone architecture, as in the case of the original stupa at Sankai, the small monolithic rail at Sankai and the Lomash Rishi cave in the Berabar caves, with its ornamentated façade reproducing the forms of wooden structure. Architecture While the period marked a second transition to use of brick and stone, wood was still the material of choice. Kartyalya in the Aitha Shastra advises the use of brick and stone for their durability. Yet he devotes a large section to safeguards to be taken against conflagrations in wooden buildings indicating their popularity. Megasthenes mentions that the capital city of Patalipatra was encircled by a massive timber palisade, pierced by loopholes through which archers could shoot. It had 64 gates and 570 towers. According to Strabo, the gilded pillars of the palace were adorned with golden vines and silver birds. The palace stood in an extensive park studded with fish ponds. It was furnished with a great variety of ornamental trees and shrubs. Excavations carried out by Spooner and Waddle have brought to light remains of huge wooden buildings at Balandabar and Kermraha, both near Patna. The remains of one of the buildings, an 80-pillared hall at Kermraha are of particular significance. Out of 80 stone columns, that once stood on a wooden platform and supported a wooden roof, Spooner was able to discover the entire lower part of at least one in almost perfect conditions. It is more or less similar to an Ashokan pillar, smooth, polished and made of grey shuna sandstone. Many stupas like those at Sankai, Sanath and probably Amravati were originally built as brick and masonry mounds during the reign of Ashoka. Unfortunately they were renovated many times, which leaves us with hardly a clue of the original structures. Sculpture This period marked an imaginative and impressive step forward in Indian stone sculpture. Much previous sculpture was probably in wood and has not survived. The elaborately carved animal capitals surviving on from some pillars of Ashoka are the best known works, and among the finest, above all the lion capital of Ashoka from Sarnath that is now the national emblem of India. Kumarasamy distinguishes between court art and a more popular art during the Mauryan period. Court art is represented by the pillars and their capitals. Popular art is represented by the works of the local sculptors like Shoribera from Dadaganj. Equals pillars in their capitals equals. These pillars were carved in two types of stone. Some were of the spotted red and white sandstone from the region of Mathura, the others of buff-colored fine-grained hard sandstone usually with small black spots quarried in the Shuna near Varanasi. The uniformity of style in the pillar capital suggests that they were all sculpted by craftsmen from the same region. It would therefore seem, that stone transported from Mathura and Shuna to the various sites where the pillars have been found and here the stone was cut and carved by craftsmen they were given a fine polish characteristic of Mauryan sculpture. These pillars were mainly erected in the Gangetic plains. They were inscribed with edicts of Ashoka on Dhamma or righteousness. The animal capital is a finely carved lifelike representation, noteworthy are the lion capital of Sanath, the bull capital of Rampurva and the lion capital of Lorian and Anga. 
Much speculation has been made about the similarity between these capitals and Achaemenid works. Equals examples of popular art equals, the work of local sculptors illustrates the popular art of the Mauryan period. This consisted of sculpture which probably was not commissioned by the emperor. The patrons of the popular art were the local governors and the more well-to-do subjects. It is represented by figures such as the female figure of Besnagar, the male figure of Parkham and the whisk-bearer from Dadarganj. Technically they are fashioned with less skill than the pillar capitals. They express a considerable earthiness and physical vitality. The stone elephant at Dawley was also probably carved by local craftsmen and not by the special craftsmen who were responsible for the animal capitals. The image of the elephant emerging from the rock is a most impressive one, and its purpose was probably to draw attention to the inscription nearby. Terracotta objects of various sizes have been found at Mauryan sites. A continuation of the tradition of making mother goddesses in clay, which dates back to the prehistoric period is revealed by the discovery of these objects at Mauryan levels during the excavations at Arikchatra. They are found more commonly from Patalipatra to Taxila. Many have stylized forms and technically they are more accomplished, in that they have a well-defined shape and clear ornamentation. Some appear to have been made from molds, yet there is little duplication. Terracottas from Taxila consist of primitive idols, votive reliefs with deities, toys dice, ornaments and beads. Among the ornaments were round medallions, similar to the bully worn by Roman boys. Ringstones probably associated with a fertility cult have also been found in some quantity. Terracotta images of folk gods and goddesses which have been found having an earthy charm. Pottery, use of the potter's wheel became universal. The pottery associated with the Mauryan period consists of many types of ware. But the most highly developed technique is seen in a special type of pottery known as the northern black polished ware, which was the hallmark of the preceding and early Mauryan periods. The NBP ware is made of finely levigated alluvial clay, which when seen in section is usually of a grey and sometimes of a red hue. It has a brilliantly burnished dressing of the quality of a glaze which ranges from a jet black to a deep grey or a metallic steel blue. Occasionally small red-brown patches are apparent on the surface. It can be distinguished from other polished or graphite-coated red wares by its peculiar luster and brilliance. This ware was used largely for dishes and small bowls. It is found in abundance in the Ganges Valley. Although NBP was not very rare, it was obviously a more expensive ware than the other varieties, since potsheds of NBP were occasionally found riveted with copper pins indicating that even a cracked vessel in NBP ware had its value. Coins the coins issued by the Mauryans are mostly silver and a few copper pieces of metal in various shapes, sizes and weights and which have one or more symbols punched on them. The most common symbols are the elephant, the tree and railing symbol and the mountain. The technique of producing such coins was generally that the metal was cut first and then the device was punched. These symbols are said to have either represented the royal insignia or the symbol of the local guild that struck the coin. Some coins had shroff marks on them indicating that older coins were often reissued. The alloy content closely resembles that specified in the Aida Shastra. Based on his identification of the symbols on the punch marked coins with certain Mauryan rulers, Kozambi argued that the Mauryan punch marked Kashapana after Chandragupta has the same weight as its predecessor, but much more copper, cruder fabric, and such a large variation in weight that the manufacturer must have been hasty. This evidence of stress and unsatisfied currency demand is accompanied by debasement plus vanishing of the reverse marks which denoted the ancient trade guilds. This in his opinion indicated that there was a fiscal crisis in the later Mauryan period. However his method of analysis and the chronological identification has been questioned. Painting While we can be sure of Mauryan proficiency in this field based on the descriptions of Megas Thenes, Unfortunately no proper representative has been found to date. Many centuries later, the paintings of the Ajanta Caves, the oldest significant body of Indian painting, show there was a well-developed tradition, which may well stretch back to Mauryan times. Gallery Notes References Thapa, Ramila Ayoka and the Decline of the Mauryas Delhi, Oxford University Press 
ISBN 0-19-560381-8. OCLC 29809355. The Culture and Civilization of Ancient India in Historical Outline by D. D. Kozambi, 1964 reprinted in 1997, Vikas Publications, New Delhi, ISBN 0-7069. 8613X, The Wonder That Was India by A. L. Basham, Picador India, ISBN 0-330-43909X, 